Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, much brighter day today, thank goodness. But a very, very cold evening and night last night. So the engine went into the kitchen to get it up to sort of room temperature to help the uh, sealant go off. And I also took the pistons, the rings and the barrels in as well and sat them in front of the fire. You'll see a picture in a sec. just to get everything up to room temperature. Um, the reason for doing that is that um, today's the day I fit the piston rings. And as you know, uh, they can be tricky and they are fragile. So I just want to show you how I fitted the piston rings. Uh, maybe you've got your own way, but this is the way I found to work for me. Okay, so these are the pistons that I'm using. Showed you those yesterday and I've already done one piston. What I've noticed is that um, the bottom ring is thicker than the top ring and the top ring has a little red mark on it. So these do have to go on a specific way. So which is the one with the red mark on? That'll be the top one. That's the thinner one. That's the thicker one. And then you look for these letters, which indicate that it's that way up. So the way that I do it is find the pin, just pop in the ring like that, and then just wind it around until it goes in like that. And then the second one, just to prove that it wasn't a fluke. Again, letters facing up. Put it in and just wind it around. Perfect. I just spent 10 minutes making sure there's no uh, sealant uh, on the crank. Uh, just worried, didn't worry that it might get gummed up. I did see some sealant marks in there from either factory or the last rebuild. So I guess it's expected that some gets in there, but I've cleaned it out with a few little flakes in there. So, what I thought I'd do this morning is um, put the pistons, cylinders and heads on and do a, try and do a leak down test before I rebuild the rest of the engine. Um, so that means that I can test the seals either side and uh, I've got better access to the engine if I do find some leaks and I have to strip some stuff down again. Obviously, if there's a serious leak and I have to split the crank, I haven't got to take all this lot off again. So that's the idea for this morning's work. I've got myself a small uh, amount of two-stroke oil. I'm just gonna put a little bit in here on the bearings and in the bottom of the crank just to lubricate um, that. We'll also put some two-stroke in here for the little end bearings and line the cylinders, you know, smear a little on the cylinders as well, just to help everything go back together. Now, the reason I want to do that is that I probably will be turning the engine over a little bit, either by hand or, um, you know, with a power tool or something. So I'll fill the cylinders with compressed air. Now, I'm not sure whether I have to um, do them individually or as a pair. Somebody said to me that the labyrinth seal in there does allow um, pressure to go from one side of the crank to the other, from one cylinder to the other. So I'll try it on an individual one first. And if, it, if I find that um, it's leaking out of the side, then I'll just um, make up a bung for the carburetor and also a plate for the exhaust. OK, let's get on with it.
Well, that was an almighty struggle. Uh, just, I guess, less of no practice really at doing it. So, anyway, it's done. So, let's try and get these base gaskets on. Get them. Okay, pistons are on the right way round. Arrow pointing to the exhaust pipe. Little holes at the back for the fuel to come in. I've put the piston at the bottom of the stroke. Just need to check the position of the pins. Same the other side, but now this is in the way to make life just that bit more interesting. I've forgotten anything, have I? These um, are the Athena gaskets. 0 0.6. Okay. Just check the torque settings and give them a tighten. Mm. Got that nice pop, pop, pop sound as the pistons go up and down now. So we're now set up for a leak down test. I've blocked the exhaust ports off with some plywood and some old inner tube. It's a set of spark plugs in it. And on this side, if you've seen my other video, you would have seen that I've made a a contraption to get compressed air into the into the cylinders and I've made a similar thing but without a valve to block off the second cylinder. Somebody said to me on uh, comments on one of the YouTube videos that you can't test the cylinders individually. You have to do them as a pair for a leak down test and he's absolutely right because I've spent a couple of hours trying to test just one cylinder at a time and getting uh, of air just escaping straight away. So I had to go down the DIY shop and make up another one of these. So let's do a leak down test. Now I understand that you only want to put in a small amount of air, about five to seven pounds, which I guess is about half a bar. This reads on bar. Um, 
and we've already it's not exactly the most accurate thing it's already saying we're at is it just no it already says we're at 2.2 2. okay so that's showing 0. 0.7 which is half a bar because it's already reading at 2 and it's holding steady nice just check to see if there is air in there listen yeah i want some air in there so let's do it again and that's holding at 0.8 so in reality 0.6 and the needle is not moving i can't hear anything leaking Still not moving. I think that's holding pressure. Third time the charm. Point eight again. I think we're good. I think we're good. I'm going to call it. I think we're good. What I'm going to do now is put the kickstarter mechanism in and start reassembling all of the clutch basket i'll put you onto time lapse for that so here i am diligently putting the clutch basket back in and then at the end i realized that the kickstarter mechanism has to go in first so i had to take off the clutch basket and start this bit all over again okay so in the description to the channel I talk about the mishaps and frustrations of keeping old bikes on the road um, and I have got both here a mishap and an extreme frustration so we're bikes practically back together and I thought what I'd do just before I put the engine cover on um, and then start with the ignition I'd check the gearbox now obviously the clutch is engaged but if you look at the uh, drive sprocket, it's turning and the bike sh should be in neutral. Um, it's not gearbox drag, because if I hold the final drive, it, won't, it turns along with the clutch. I've tried to find neutral in here and can't find it. And in fact, when I do select a gear, what happens is, the gearbox locks up so clearly what I've done is reassembled the gearbox incorrectly so all of the work you've just seen me do has got to be undone and I've got to split the case and get back into that gearbox see you in the next one